All right, we have a uh, geometric style question here, and it will take some intuitive understanding. But uh, uh, again, we'll have um, something to deal with the calculus here soon. So our question is, find the angle theta max at which the maximum radiation is emitted. Show that for the ultra relativistic speeds, V close to C, theta max equal uh, square root of one minus beta over two. What is the intensity of the radiation in this maximal direction in the ultra, ultra relativistic case? In proportion to the same quantity for particle instantaneously at rest. Okay, that's going to be fun to deal with. Give your answer in terms of gamma. Okay. Well, what we need to know is the power radiated through the solid angle, assuming that the uh, velocity and acceleration are collinear. Okay, we get dp over the solid angle, so we're going to have to integrate over something. That's what this is telling us. We get the Lamar-esque formula where we have mu naught q squared a squared over 16 pi squared c times sine squared theta over 1 minus beta cosine to the fifth power. Okay, uh, this correction has to happen because we are assuming that, that this is happening at any random angle, so we have to throw in the thetas there. Um, which we'll see in the diagrams here shortly. Uh, beta here is the ratio of V to C. We've seen that before. And gamma, as we kind of talked about a couple chapters ago, um, especially in chapter 9, I believe. Uh, gamma was equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. That's just a factor we'll see again in the relativity section. And uh, But since beta is V over C, we have gamma is 1 over uh, square root of 1 minus beta squared. So earlier we saw some intensity graphs that dealt with the pointing vector. Um, now in this particular case, since we have the radiation of a point charge, that kind of thing changed with the radiation fields. So in this diagram, what we see is acceleration happening. Meanwhile, script R is pointing at some angle theta, which we don't know. But what this diagram actually represents is that this is a, you know, the power radiated, um, which shows that we don't have anything emitted in the direction of acceleration, but rather we have everything emitted in what is a donut shape about the direction of acceleration. Um, again, this would be considered the instantaneous acceleration, and so we'll have to be careful with that. Um, but this was just the starting point. What we now know is that um, if we're trying to go at a faster speed, then the uh, con donut configuration actually gets squished down by the uh, factor of 1 uh, minus beta cosine theta to the negative 5. And we see that that is stretched, and this is what's indicated in this figure here. Um, again, take a look at these in the meantime, but what we see is that the x, if we're traveling at really high speeds, V that are close to C, that configuration gets really compressed, okay? Um, this concept will come back again, but what we're seeing here is that we have to find that theta max now. This is what we're looking for. How does the emission uh, correspond when we travel really fast since it doesn't happen in the same direction as the movement? Okay, so in order to tackle this problem, what we need to use is our tricks from calculus. So we know that as something is a max when we set its derivative equal to zero, okay? So here, since we're looking for theta max, we just take the derivative of um, the formula that we were given for collinear V and A, and we just take the derivative of the theta part of that because everything else is a constant and gets dumped over to the zero anyways. Okay, so with that, what we see here is that, uh, you know, use your product rule, uh, you know, keep the first term, find its derivative. The second term is hidden with the uh, negative power, so we get a negative 5 there. And then we uh, add 1 to that, so that's what we see there. Take the chain rule, use it, and uh, we see we get a factor of beta sine theta. And now we need to see where that equals 0. So if that's the case, push that uh, second term over, add it over, and solve away. We see that the denominators cancel quite quickly. Uh, at least the fifth power, it cancels out with all the powers higher than one on the right-hand side. We have a sine squared, which we'll reconsider. 
uh, canceling or rewriting into cosines. We see that we get a factor of sine that cancels on both sides in the numerator as well. So we're left with two cosine theta is uh, times one minus beta uh, sine or cosine theta from the denominator on the right hand side. And that's equal to the numerator on the right hand side, which is five beta sine squared, but the sine squared we can rewrite in terms of cosine. Now that we have everything in terms of cosine, the left hand side goes to two cosine theta distributed minus two beta cosine squared is equal to five beta minus five beta cosine squared. So if we combine this into a quadratic, what we see is we have three beta cosine squared plus two cosine theta minus five beta equals zero. And we can solve away the quadratic equation. Okay, uh, simplify this to the best of your ability. And so what we need to do now is that in order to maximize the radiation, we want where cosine theta equals zero. Recall that the formula for the uh, power radiated had one minus beta cosine in the denominator. So if cosine theta goes to zero, then we have the uh, smallest possible denominator. So to do this, we need to cancel the negative one in the numerator. So uh, for when beta goes to zero, so we want the plus sign in the quadratic equation. Okay, so with that, for V approximately equal to C, beta is approximately equal to one. So we can write beta as equal to one minus epsilon, okay? Where epsilon is much less than one, clearly. This allows us to use an expansion and we can fiddle away as we see here. The, uh, these expansions don't leave us, do they? All the way from chapter three, we see them still being implemented. Uh, so take your time with it. It doesn't get easier. It's still a mess every time we apply it. I'll let you look through the work. But here, what we see is that we are finally approximated to one minus one fourth epsilon. Okay. So evidently, theta max is approximately zero. So cosine of theta max is approximately one minus uh, one half theta max squared. Again, that came from a Taylor expansion small angle really and what we see is that if that's the case we have to set this equal to one minus one over four epsilon and so we solve this for theta max with respect to what epsilon is and when we do this we get theta max is approximately the square root of epsilon over two which if we put back in the substitution we get one minus beta over two that's our theta max um, this is not at all obvious so to speak and the method here is we're just trying to apply two approximations to the fact that we have an ultra relativistic case. Okay, take your time handling these. They're not always easy or necessary, or not always easy or fun to deal with, but these approximation schemes come back over and over again. Uh, so if we want to find a fraction of the ultra relativistic to the rest case, then we just take, um, you know, take the solid angle power radiate it and divide it by the rest case and so we see all that we're really left with is the sine squared theta max over one minus beta cosine theta max to the fifth simply because um the co the coefficients that were all constants cancel in both that was the point of the rest case is that theta was zero for everything or that the data terms in the bracket cancel away so the coefficients cancel, and now we're just left with evaluating what the sine squared of theta max and cosine theta max are. So similarly, since uh, we used the first order expansion on the cosine uh, theta max, we know that that's one minus uh, one half uh, theta max squared. Similarly, a sine theta max squared from small angle identities that we have seen before is just theta max squared. So if we plug in the epsilon rule, then we get epsilon over two after evaluation. And similarly, the whole denominator, one minus beta cosine theta max, well, we see what that's equal to. So uh, apply very, uh, you know, don't apply, but uh, simplify uh, accordingly. So now the ratio becomes epsilon over two divided by five epsilon over four to the fifth power. You know, cancel away as you see fit. What we're left with is four over five to the fifth uh, and then times one over two epsilon to the fourth. But here, uh, if we're gonna put this in terms of gamma, we want to uh, go back and say, well, gamma was one minus 
1 over the square root of 1 minus beta squared, but beta was 1 minus epsilon. So now we can approximate that again, since epsilon is really small, to 1 minus 1 uh, minus 2 epsilon, and that, you know, expansion. Higher orders won't matter, so we're just left with the cross term there. Um, instead of having a plus epsilon squared, that will be meaningless. So the ones cancel, and we're left with a root 2 over epsilon. So if we solve this for epsilon, we get 1 over 2 gamma squared, and so the fraction becomes 4 over 5 to the 5th, 1 half, times 2 gamma to the gamma squared to the 4th power. And we're writing uh, 2 over 2 just so we can put another factor of 2 in that 5th uh, power bracket. And what we see is we have 1 fourth from the 2 over 2s, or the denominators of 2s, 4 times 2 over 5 to the 5th power times gamma to the 8th. So if we simplify that to a decimal, we get 2.62 gamma to the eighth, and we're done.